So in this video, I'm gonna share a massive list of business ideas that you can implement in 2023. So let's go ahead, and get started with this video. If you're new here to the channel, make sure you subscribe for more videos like this. But these are all business ideas that I would personally consider doing this year. Now I can guarantee that there's some in here that you've never heard of. So uh, let's get into it right now. Now the first business that I think I would go out and start today in 2023 is a Twitter ghostwriting business. And the reason why I say this is because last year I reached out to a couple of people. I wanted to have someone basically pretend to be me on Twitter and just tweet things every day because I wanted to grow that account. Uh, and so I got quotes from half a dozen different people who offered those services. And the range was anywhere from $2,000 to $6,000 per month to basically pretend to be me on Twitter and just blast things out there and just tweet every day. Uh, I ended up not doing it because I realized I want to just tweet my own stuff and I had time to do it myself. But then I realized how great of a business op opportunity there is in Twitter ghostwriting services. So you reach out to people who are looking to grow their uh, uh, Twitters, especially like in, in venture capital, there's like a lot of VCs who don't even write their own tweets. They just have people uh, ghostwriting for them, and you can get between two and six thousand dollars per month. You can even go and undercut most of these people who are offering these services and do it for perhaps one half the price, and do it for a thousand dollars per month. Load up a bunch of clients, and you can easily make sixty, seventy thousand dollars per year by offering Twitter ghostwriting services. I think it's one of the best opportunities. Yes, there's other social media marketing stuff you can do, but I think Twitter specifically ghostwriting is one of the best ones out there. All right, so the second thing that you can consider doing as a business this year is to build custom vans for people who are looking to do van life. Um, so I know for a fact that there is a massive back order for people who do this, where uh, there's so many people who want to do van life, right? It's obviously, it's, it's very trendy, but it's only growing the amount of people who want to do this. Uh, but they don't know how to build out an interior of a van. They don't know how to outfit it with a bed and a sink and everything else. If you have some basic skills with uh, a carpentry or just you know understand how to use a hammer and screwdriver and everything, uh, then you can probably figure out how to outfit vans and I'm telling you right now that you can profit sometimes upwards of ten thousand dollars per van that you do this for so it's not like you're going out and actually buying the van you have someone they go buy the van they bring it to you and you build out the whole interior you make it look really pretty um, and you can profit over ten thousand dollars per van now imagine you're doing one of these per quarter so maybe you're doing four of these per year you can profit over forty thousand dollars per year on something like that and then imagine if you're doing one per month that's one hundred twenty thousand dollars per month yes I'm sure there's going to be problems along with it. It's not going to be perfect, but overall, I think it's a really great business opportunity and it has a really great growth potential uh, in the coming decade, really, as more people want to have vans that they can live in. So speaking of vehicles, the next one is uh, to flip cars and not like literally flipping cars like you're rioting, um, but buy cars at auctions, specifically at auctions, and then turn around and sell them for a profit. Uh, in fact, I just bought a Jeep from a dealer and he bought this from an auction. And I, I can nearly guarantee you that he probably bought it for half the price that I paid for. I paid like $8,000. He probably bought this at auction for $4,000 at most. Um, and so the thing is consumers, they don't go to car auctions. You can get really great deals. I know a lot of people who do this. They get amazing deals on very niche cars and then you don't even really have to fix them up very much and then you just turn around and sell them for at least a few thousand dollars profit on those vehicles. I suggest doing this with very specific niche vehicles uh, like old Jeeps, for example, or old pickup trucks that are very much in demand and they're hard to find. Um, you can get some sweet deals on them and make some pretty decent money. Uh, you know, you can make a full-time living on this or you could just do this sort of as like a passion project. Maybe you fix up a couple of cars per year and you sell them and you can you know, make 10, 20, $30,000 per year by doing this on the side after work on the weekend. I think it's a pretty great one. You know, a lot of people overlook stuff like this because they just want like the easy, trendy online business opportunities. Um, but if you don't mind getting your hands a little bit dirty, then I think you can make a lot of money on this. Okay, this next one is for people who are looking to do something from their computer and it's by building and selling templates. Um, and specifically what I'm talking about in this category is something like Notion templates or Excel templates. Um, so I used to sell 
um, a, a budget uh, and financial planning templates. I've made a bunch in, in Microsoft Excel and I used to sell them for like $5. And uh, you know, it sold pretty well. I actually sold them on, on this channel um, and it did pretty well. But if you go onto something like Etsy, you can see so many templates on Etsy where people are selling thousands and thousands of templates, sometimes tens of thousands of templates for five or $10 a piece. You add up the math there and you can realize that you can make six figures by selling templates. And the beauty of selling templates is that once they are created, let's say it's like a Notion template, once it's created, you don't have to ever make it again. It's, it's already there, right? Uh, and so basically it's almost all profit from there. Um, so I think it's a pretty uh, low hanging fruit, pretty easy one to get into, especially if you already have have maybe some social media and you can promote it on there or you want to do it through something like Etsy where they kind of promote it within the platform. Another business idea is a 3D printing business. Uh, so my brother has a 3D printer and I'm always calling him up asking if he can print uh, certain products uh, that I can use for my desk setup or I might need it for one of my cars or like a phone holder. There's all kinds of little things that I end up uh, having him print off on his 3D printer. 3D printers are really cool. They're only getting better and it's really crazy to see the technology going into some of these now. Like they're actually 3D printing houses. They just started 3D printing houses very recently with concrete. Super fascinating. I just think it's a, a cool industry that has a lot of growth potential uh, in all different categories there. Um, so the next business idea is to build outdoor offices. So outdoor office space is something that obviously got kind of trendy back in 2020 when we had the whole pandemic. But a big problem that a lot of people face is that they don't have a quiet space to work from home in their house. Maybe they have kids running around, they have other family members, they have like animals and just all kinds of like dogs barking and stuff and it's very loud. So you create this product where you build an outdoor office, basically a shed but with lots of windows and you finish it on the inside. Yes, you're gonna want some construction capabilities here. Um, but you can sell these for really high premiums, a lot more than you could sell them uh, like if it was just a regular shed, and there's always going to be demand for this. Um, it's, it's once again a very niche product. You're not just building like sheds for people's lawnmowers, you're building outdoor office space for people who want an office at their house. Uh, they don't want you know, to have it in their, their actual physical house because maybe there's uh, a lot of people in there. Um, and I think this is a great opportunity. You know, if, if I had land, I would totally do this. If I had a family and kids, I would totally buy one of these, put it in my backyard, and this is where I would work during the day so that I don't get distracted by everyone in the house. I think it's a great one, um, and I don't really see many people making these. Okay, the next one, I am definitely biased on this, but I think a Christmas tree farm is, is so interesting of a business idea because, uh, first of all, my grandfather's been selling Christmas trees for over 50 or 60 years now. Um, and every December, people come by, buy their Christmas trees, um, and they cut them down themselves. It's a great you know, uh, uh, thing for everyone. And if you have any land, then I think this is a great opportunity. Now, if you don't have land, don't worry because there's still ways that you can go about this. You can lease land from people. Uh, if you see one of your neighbors, perhaps they have land, they're not using it. You can come up with a business plan with them and say, hey, look, I'll plant the trees. I'll take care of them. I will sell them. If I can use your land, we can do some type of profit share. There's all kinds of different opportunities. Just in general with land, I love making money on land because you're literally watching trees grow and you're making money from it. Um, so yes, I'm biased on that, um, but I just think Christmas tree farms are really cool. Uh, and it, it does take time. You know, you're not gonna become a billionaire overnight from selling Christmas trees, um, but it's relatively passive. Once a year, you might have to shear them. So here's something that I have a lot of respect for, and that is starting a trucking business. Um, so there are over two and a half million truckers in the United States, but if you can start a trucking business and pick up very, uh, uh, very uh, profitable routes, then you can make a lot of money in this industry. Now, as a whole already, uh, the average trucker makes some pretty good money, especially if you're a long haul trucker. But if you have your own routes, there are possibilities of making upwards of six figures per year. And I've seen people make millions per year if they have the right routes. Now, it's hard to get that. And the trucking industry is very, very interesting. Um, and you, I recommend studying it a lot before you ever consider jumping in because there's a lot of people who get baited into uh, becoming a trucker and then 
then they make a lot less money than they were expecting because whoever got them to sign into it, yeah, yeah. So it's, but it is an opportunity. And I think as we go on, uh, there's going to be more and more demand for truckers. And yeah, some people say, like Andrew Yang will say, oh, you know, truckers are gonna get replaced by self-driving cars and everything. I think that is a really far, far thing away. I mean, we're talking multiple decades away from that actually happening. Um, so I think that there's still great opportunity in something like that. So the next business idea is to start a catering business. Now look, the food industry is really tough. If, you ever, if you've ever tried to start a restaurant or a fast food chain, or you've even worked in them, you know that margins are really, really tough in the food industry. But the catering business is a lot more interesting because uh, you don't have to rely on daily customers coming in the door. There's a lot more predictability with the catering business. And so if you get certain clients, maybe you're catering for wedding events or you're catering um, for someone's yacht party or you're catering for uh, maybe like a school, um, right? When you have something like that, it's a lot more predictable. And so you know how many people to hire, you know uh, uh, how much food to buy. Um, and so I think you know, it's, it's, it's a really uh, fascinating business opportunity is something like the catering business uh, by bidding on certain contracts and landing them and then getting those uh, customers. So that's one that I think people overlook. Now, another business idea is to start a campground or to buy a campground. Now, yeah, buying one outright is gonna cost you a lot of money, but if you have a lot of land, once again, you can start a campground, make money on this. Campsites right now, $50, $60 a night for basic utilities in campgrounds. Um, and so this is kind of like a hotel, but uh, you don't have to go in and uh, hire someone to like clean rooms and make beds and everything every day. Um, it's a lot more passive on that side. So campgrounds, super interesting. I've spent so much time in campgrounds growing up. Um, so it's one that I would love to own a campground sometime in my life. Uh, the great outdoors, wonderful. So that's a good idea there. Okay, the next one is to become an interior designer. Look, um, it, when I move into places, I tend to be minimalist. And a lot of that is because I just don't like want to or don't know how to furnish an apartment properly. I'm a guy in my 20s. Yeah, part of me doesn't really care. But also, um, if someone approached me, I would totally pay someone to furnish my apartments when I move into them because I just don't really have the know-how. I don't know, does does wood look good with this color and, and does, is black good with blue? It, like, I really don't know. Um, and so, especially if I become wealthy one day, I will totally pay someone to design the interior of my house. Um, so I, I would say this one's especially good for if you are someone and you have a lot of friends who are wealthy, your social circle is just like a lot of business people or a lot of executives. Maybe you live in like New York or Los Angeles or Dubai or something where people just tend to be pretty affluent and have a lot of money. If that's the case, then this might be a pretty good opportunity for you to do some interior design for people when they move into new places. Because imagine how much you can make if someone buys a $30 million penthouse in New York and you are the interior designer for that, I can nearly guarantee that that person is making at least tens of thousands of dollars to design a place like that. But of course, yeah, like I said, it's hard to get into. Uh, you have to have the right connections for something like that. One business that I really wanted to start last year, I, I just don't have the time for it, but it's a very unique e-commerce business. Now, if you just try to go out and like start a jewelry business or something or a t-shirt business, that's really tough. And yes, it's possible some people can break through, but if you're looking to do e-commerce, then it's super important to go into something that is super, super niche. So uh, one thing that I saw blow up uh, literally uh, uh, last around Thanksgiving of last year was flamethrowers. In the United States, people I don't know, it's just the US, but uh, whoever was making these, uh, these are perfectly legal in the US, by the way, because they're for agricultural reasons. Um, but these were selling for like $600 a piece, no competition. I can guarantee that whoever's making these is making them for probably less than $200 a piece. It's like, it looks like some basic uh, uh, welds on there and some basic components. And so they're probably profiting anywhere between $300 and $400 per piece of equipment that they're selling, massive margins, and they're selling thousands of these because they uh, had them on TikTok. People were showing them on TikTok. It was like, whoa, this is kind of uh, crazy. What is this? I'm not condoning it, okay? I'm just saying that 
you know, the margin margins on this were crazy, probably three, four hundred dollars, and they're selling thousands of these, probably tens of thousands of them. I would bet that they're making millions of dollars from something like that. Now, you take that same concept, like I'm not telling you to go out and make flamethrowers, but you take that same concept where you run the numbers. You know, you see something on TikTok, you say, okay, this product, it's going viral. A lot of people are buying it. There's not many suppliers. How much do you think they're making? And you run some calculations in your head, quick and dirty numbers. How much would it cost to make that? Uh, and then how much could I sell it for? You run some numbers, you calculate how many people are probably buying it, and you gauge the market interest and the market opportunity, okay? So not just like flamethrowers, but you take that and you use that in, in other categories, and you find really cool things like night vision goggles. I don't know why I keep seeing these things on my feed on TikTok, but this is another one they're selling for thousands of dollars, not a lot of competition, and uh, you can get some free marketing on, on TikTok or other social platforms. So really fascinating if you go into those niche products. Just please don't start a generic e-commerce business where you're selling something very basic like jewelry or t-shirts because it's so, so tough to break through those. Um, and if you do break through on those, great. I, I have a ton of respect for you, but it's going to be very, very difficult. Starting a notary business is also a great opportunity for 2023. Um, you know, if, if you are buying a vehicle from a private party or you're trying to transfer, you know, a title of something and trying to transfer a home purchase, like there's, there's a lot of things that require something to be notarized. Um, and so you have to go to a public notary for this. And uh, it's actually not terrible. Well, it, it depends on where you live, but it's not terribly difficult to become a public notary. Um, so look into that. You know, you might need some licensing, but it really does depend on your state. But it is a great opportunity for people. And it can be one of those sort of side businesses that you have uh, that, you know, you're not doing 100% of the time. But whenever something comes up, you say, yeah, by the way, I am, you know, uh, able to uh, be a, a public notary. So that's a great opportunity there for people. Um, another one that I think is great is starting some type of co-working space. Um, so I subscribe to multiple co-working offices. I have WeWork. Obviously, WeWork has had some big problems. They're very national uh, or actually global. Um, but I've also been part of co-working spaces in like Leadville, Colorado, or, um, or in certain uh, mountain towns in Utah where uh, I need Wi-Fi service. I'm living in my truck, um, and I end up subscribing to these co-working spaces, and they're pretty great. You know, if you need fast internet and everything like that. So uh, there's options to do this. This is obviously more of like a big ambition business. This isn't something that you're going to be doing 10 hours a week. Um, but if you find very specific towns where they're kind of really uh, uh, reinventing themselves, they're up and coming, or like look at Pittsburgh, for example, I think there'd be a great opportunity for some good co-working spaces in Pittsburgh. I would totally subscribe to them if I lived there so I can get fast Wi-Fi, free coffee, some other perks as well. Um, you make it fun, you build a community, and um, yeah. I just think it's one that you know not a lot of people are looking at. Another thing you can do is start a microgreens business. Um, so, look, I'm in California right now filming this video, and uh, people love microgreens, like wheatgrass. I go to the store, and and people just buy cartons of, of wheatgrass and they throw it in their smoothies. They do things like that, I suppose. Um, but I can tell you that, look, I mean, wheat, wheat seeds are pretty cheap and they're selling in the store like a little pack of wheatgrass for like seven or eight dollars. So they're making some pretty fat margins on something like that. Um, and of course, you know, it has a ton of health benefits, but microgreens, they're pretty easy to plant. They're pretty easy to grow. I've been doing them for over a decade. When I was in high school, I would just, you know, eat sprouts every day that I would grow. Um, so have some experience in it. Um, and if there's a market for it in your area, if there's people who are really uh, focused on their health uh, and, and to eat quality foods, then um, I'm sure you could find uh, a way to sell microgreens. So consider starting a printing business for political campaigns. So political campaigns, they spend a lot of money um, and they need yard signs. They need all kinds of different decals. They need stickers. Um, and so you can source this for them. You can find the printers uh, and you can print them yourself as well. So when I was younger, uh, when I was in high school and college, I made a decent amount of money selling bumper stickers on platforms like eBay and Etsy and Amazon. Um, and I was buying these stickers 
in bulk. I was buying them by the thousands from a business that uh, uh, primarily sold uh, stickers and decals and uh, different types of printing services to political campaigns. Now, I wasn't a political campaign myself, um, but I made political bumper stickers through that company. So you could actually do a couple different things here. You could literally just sell bumper stickers, which like you can make decent money on, trust me, I, I, I did it. Um, or you could actually become the printer for the people who are selling bumper stickers, because most people who sell bumper stickers are not printing them themselves, they're sourcing them from the printer. So you have two options there. Um, both of them are pretty good. And once again, are things you can do on the side. You don't have to make it a full-time thing. It can just be something you do after work or on the weekends. Okay, so here's another opportunity for you. Uh, and this one is a little bit more complex. And you know, I, I, I want to keep this video uh, pretty uh, uh, diverse in terms of ideas. So if you don't like one, I'm sorry, you can go on to the next one, and there might be something for you. But this next one is to start a helicopter tour business. And look, you don't have to have a helicopter for this. You can just be someone who connects the people who have the helicopters with the people who want to go on helicopter tours. So one of the biggest companies in this space right now is Blade. And so Blade, they don't actually own these helicopters. I don't believe that they own these helicopters. They are just basically a charter where they're connecting people who want to go on the helicopters with people who own the helicopters. And they're connecting them and then they're taking a fee from that. Now, you do need some proper licensing for this. I believe you'd have to be like a charter. So you have to go through regulations. And I'm going to be honest, I actually don't know the full process of that. Um, but I think it's pretty cool. Um, and, you know, like most private jets, for example, are used through charters. And that's a like a separate company. They don't own the jets. They're just helping people who own the jets connect people with people who want to fly on private jets. Um, so connecting people, if you're good at that, then there is some opportunity there. Okay, you can also launch products with influencers. I think this is one of the best, honestly, probably the top five best opportunities for 2023 is launching products with influencers. You know, I think of two right off the bat here, uh, something like Graham Stephan with his bankroll coffee, right? I think he had someone else in there uh, who was helping on like the product side. Uh, I think he made a video about it. You can go find that. Um, but Graham, very popular. And so he partnered up with someone to launch this coffee product and then go even on a bigger scale and look at someone like Logan Paul with Prime. Now Prime, I would say is probably worth hundreds of millions of dollars at least. It might, it's honestly probably worth over a billion dollars today already. Um, and you know, Logan's not the one who's actually making these bottles and, and going through like all the logistics of that. He's just the influencer. He partnered with someone else uh, and they worked together on that. Um, you know, 50 cent with vitamin water back in the day, like 20 years ago, um, or look at um, uh, Mr. Beast with Feastables or uh, Nelk with uh, their hard seltzer company, Happy Dad, that's worth a couple hundred million already. Um, and so partnering with someone who has a lot of influence can be a really great business opportunity. Now, how do you get in contact with them? Okay, that's where it gets a little bit difficult. But if you are a product person you, and you understand uh, uh, e-commerce or just sales in general, uh, then there can be a lot of potential money to be made right there. And I think it's one of the best opportunities, cold DMs, cold outreach, uh, just going in and trying to connect with some of these people who don't have physical products, like for me, for example, right? Um, I, I'm not that popular, but like, I don't have any physical products to sell people. Um, and I also don't have the time to do it. So I would be willing to partner with someone, uh, you know, if they came up with a product idea and said, hey, let's sell this on your channel, I, I would take it up probably. All right. Um, I know some people are going to laugh at this one, but I got to throw it in here because this is something that I would do. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, it's by having a junkyard. So my neighbor, uh, look, we're, we're trying to find ways that people can make money that are obscure, that you're not going to like see on every blog because everyone's just telling you to do freelance writing and to walk dogs and stuff like that. Like that's boring. Okay. Owning a junkyard, my neighbor has a junkyard. Um, and basically his whole business model for his entire life has been pretty simple. He acquires vehicles for usually for free or for like a hundred dollars for scrap metal price. And then he brings it into his junkyard, drops it off in the junkyard. And then how do these companies actually make money? Well, guess what? You know, let's say that my Jeep has a, a problem. I need like a new uh, steering wheel or something, or I need um, like a very specific uh, exhaust pipe or a very specific like um, throttle position sensor, or, like th the throttle body or something, right? Um, you know, they don't make those parts anymore. So I have to go to a junkyard to go buy that. And so if you are the person who acquires uh, a, an, an, like an old beat up car that maybe was an accident and you got that car for $100 and then someone needs a very specific part from that, you can sell that part for $200 you automatically doubled your money right there. Um, and then you sell the tires, you sell 
off all the different parts of a vehicle and you can make a lot of money from this. And like, I know it's not glamorous um, and probably nobody watching this video is gonna do it, um, but you can make money from it, okay? So like, think outside the box a little bit on some of these things um, rather than just trying to follow everyone and, and, and do the same thing that everyone's doing. Um, you don't have to reinvent the wheel on some of these different business opportunities to make money. So I think there's no issue with something like a junkyard like it, it it needs to happen like you you need them right uh for for parts you can't just crush up cars all the time um so yeah that's that's one that uh, i think is pretty interesting so another one here is to become a golf coach or really just any coach in general where you have a skill but this is something that i would totally pay someone to teach me how to golf i i want to learn how to golf i have no idea how to do it i don't know anybody who would want to teach me how to golf so if you know how to golf and you're really good at it uh, i actually just slide in my DMs on Instagram or something because um, I'm, I'm trying to learn and I'll pay you good money to teach me how to do it. Um, and that goes for anything else. Like if you're really good at sailing or you're really good at, um, I, I don't know, anything, chess or whatever, right? Anything that you have a skill at that you're better than most people at, go out and sell that as a service to teach people how to do it, okay? Uh, if you're good at certain languages, you know, if you're bilingual, trilingual, you know a bunch of languages, People will pay you to, to learn how to do that. And there's sites that can connect you with people so you don't have to go out and like find clients yourself. Um, any skill you have, you can easily monetize. One of the like least low hanging fruits possible you can have is just teaching something that you're already good at. Uh, it's pretty straightforward on that side. All right, here's another one that is for people who are very much hands-on. A tree removal service. This was another business that I had with my brother. This is one of our first businesses when I was 14. He was 16, he got his driver's license, had the pickup truck. We would go cut down trees for people. You would charge to cut down the trees, right? Then you would charge to take the trees away because nobody wants trees laying all over their property. Uh, and then you would take the tree away and then you would cut it up and sell it for firewood. So we were making triple money on every tree that we were processing. Um, and the equipment needed for this was really not much. I mean, we bought a chainsaw tractor supply for $150 and we had an old pickup truck that was worth maybe a couple thousand dollars at most. Um, and then we just had an ax, a mall, uh, eventually had a log splitter and just went through that and just sold all that firewood, right? We're making triple money on that from the tree, the whole process there. Um, and it was some decent money. Like this is another thing that I did to make thousands of dollars to then pay for my college education. Um, this is something you can do on the weekends. This is something you can do after work. It is very much uh, a <laughs> laborious. It, it, it's, it's going to be a lot of labor going into it, but I kind of just viewed it as like, this is my time to work out. I'm gonna go split wood and this is how I'm gonna get my workout for the next hour. And if you view it like that, it's really not, you know, it's, it's not that bad. I actually enjoy splitting wood. It's kind of like therapeutic in a way, sort of like mowing a lawn. I find it therapeutic, it's nice. Um, so yeah, that's one that, you know, probably do again when I'm older and I kind of like semi-retire, but I still want to make, you know, extra $5,000 a year, I'll probably just sell firewood. Another thing you can do is become a historical artifacts seller, I think you would call it. Uh, but basically you go to auctions or even yard sales, you find things that have historical value and then you turn around and you sell them on other sites. So this is kind of just basic flipping, but like you can do this for anything, right? So I bought um, this old letter from Napoleon uh, and I, I buy a bunch of different like historical things just because I love history. Um, and it was from like the 1800s. I thought it was interesting and I paid at least a few thousand dollars for it. I don't remember the specific price on it, but whoever bought that um, earlier, I'm sure they turned around and they sold it to me for a decent profit. I'm assuming they made at least 20% profit on something like that. Um, so if you enjoy history as well, and you're not in like an urge to make a ton of money, then this is something that you can do, right? So like I bought this thing for a few thousand dollars, I'm gonna hold it, but maybe I can list it for like five or $6,000. If it doesn't sell, okay, that's fine. I'll just hold on to it. I think it's pretty interesting. Um, but if it does sell, great. So if you take this approach of like buying things and not being in a rush to sell them and just listing them at higher prices, uh, this is a great way to make some money, especially if you're not in that rush to sell things, right? So like, let's say that um, you buy an old, antique desk. Actually, antique desks are worth a lot of money. You'd be surprised. Um, and you just use it as a regular desk, but you list it on whatever sites you can sell it on. You list it for double what you paid for it and you wait till someone buys it. Somebody will eventually. It might take a few years, but eventually someone will buy it um, and you'll make some good money on it. And in the meantime, just use it as a regular desk or just have it in your place. Um, so you, kind of using the strategy of buying things that you kind of like already and then listing them for way higher, waiting for them to sell, not being in a rush to sell, 
It's a great way to make some money. I, I did this all the time back in the day uh, and it was, it was just wonderful. Another business that I have actually taken on uh, in the past couple of years is I buy YouTube channels, I buy blogs, I buy equity in other small businesses. So if you're in a position where maybe you have some cash, maybe you have a few thousand dollars already and you're looking for a way to grow that, then consider buying equity in some of these different things. Now you're taking a lot of risk, but um, I've, I've done this in the past where you see someone with like a TikTok account, it's starting to grow a lot, but you know, maybe the person who's running it, they're not business oriented um, or they still have their job so they can't do it full time, but they don't wanna take that leap to, to just quit their job. You could be someone who comes in, uh, obtain some equity from that channel or from that account and then also you're taking on a big amount of risk so it's not like it's predatory because you're taking on a huge risk you're paying the person a salary to go out and make the TikToks, and you're saying i'm going to give you at least a year of a salary here uh and in return you know i'm taking on a ton of risk by uh you know like trying to prop up this channel this account and make it into a bigger brand this is what record labels do all the time uh this is what like you know, I think of like um, Dave Portnoy with uh, some of the podcasts that he's acquired for Barstool, where he'll take on a lot of the risk. He'll say, okay, like come under our shop um, and we'll pay you a salary. And if it blows up, great. You know, I get some of the returns on that because I took the big risk of bringing you in and, and, and paying you a salary, even though it's making nothing at the moment. So three more ideas that you can use to make some money this year. Uh, the next one is equipment rentals. Look, any type of equipment, going back to like the wood splitting example that I used, um, you know, log splitters, a lot of people don't have them. They might have a tree on their property, uh, but they don't know how to cut it up and split it and everything. And so you can rent a log splitter for 150 bucks a day, 200 bucks a day. Uh, going bigger than that, things like excavators or heavy uh, machinery that a lot of people, you know, you're not gonna go out and buy like a backhoe to do uh, certain work in your backyard it, just for one project, right? And so my family's rented all kinds of different machinery uh, in the past when we need to do specific projects. Maybe you need a tractor, you need a certain type of mower, you need some different like equipment. Uh, you can become a, an equipment rental business. And the cool thing about this is you can start with small equipment, like a lawnmower. You can rent out lawnmowers to people. And then eventually as you start to profit, you take those profits and you turn around and you buy more equipment. And next thing you know, you suddenly have like 50 pieces of equipment. You're renting out trucks, you're renting out like construction vehicles, you're renting out all kinds of stuff. Um, it's a great way to bootstrap yourself into a multi-million dollar business of equipment rentals. The final two business ideas that I wanna share with you, uh, one of them is lending money. I do this all the time for people that I know, uh, whether they're friends or associates or people that I actually don't really know that well. Um, and I'll just add on a, an interest rate on that. I'll kind of understand the risk profile. Is this someone who has a history of paying back loans? Are they not paying back loans? How's their credit score? Uh, I'll evaluate that and then I will potentially lend them money. Um, and so this could be for anything like, you know, maybe someone wants to buy a car, they don't want to buy, get like a loan through the dealer and you can do it for them. Um, of course, there's a lot of risk in this. You can lose a lot of money on this. I've had uh, many deals go south where I've lent money to people and they never paid me back. But you calculate that in the risk. And that's why you charge higher rates on certain people. And uh, yeah, so uh, just something that you can do once again, sort of like on the side, um, you know, and I've, I've done much larger loans as well. Someone wants to buy a business or they're trying to buy a house um, and, you know, maybe they can't get approved by the bank or it takes too long to get approved by the bank. And so I can just lend them money on the spot, add some points on there plus interest and make like a quick profit for me um, that, you know, it, it, it's worked out pretty well so far. I'm sure some deals will go south eventually, but um, yeah, it's, it's worked out. So the final business idea that I want to share with you is to become essentially an, like an executive coach. So I met a guy who was doing this uh, last year. He used to be like a Peloton inst instructor, but now he has a full-time living by being an executive coach. So if you look at people who are like CEOs or executives or, you know, they're like lawyers, doctors, or really anyone who's just really busy and they have a lot going on in their life, um, a, a lot of these people, they don't have time to like optimize everything, right? Maybe they don't have time to work out or they feel like they don't have enough time for their relationship with their significant other or they don't have enough time for their kids or like all these other things that they want to make happen but they're just kind of stretched too thin. And so executive coaches are really useful for this. Um, and you know, I, I've never like hired one myself because I'm just a single guy and I, I 
kind of just work for myself and do my own thing, so I don't really feel like I need one. Um, but I can see how this is totally an interesting business. These people have a lot of money uh, and they're looking for some help on like just how to organize their life. It could be something very simple. Um, and sometimes they just need a pep talk as well. So uh, I think it's a cool business opportunity for people out there, especially if you're really gifted with speaking and understanding how humans operate and how to optimize life in general, then I think this is a really interesting one for you. So those are some business ideas that you can use for 2023. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you found it valuable. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss more videos like this. Follow me on Instagram. I'll be posting some things on there uh, as well as Twitter. So thank you and I'll see everybody in next week's video.